there's no question that tourism has uh, brought a lot of economic benefits to Hawaii, but it's also brought a tremendous amount of costs. And there's a question about whether the economic benefits are of a sufficient value for the cost. And by that, I mean a lot of our tourism jobs are low paying jobs, they're service industry, and it's transitioning from union jobs that came with benefits to contractor, independent contractor jobs that don't come with benefits. And so we're seeing just the pace of change increase really rapidly in our society. So I remember going to Andy's drive-in and getting a short stack with my dad <laughs> back in 1987. And, uh, and so all I can, uh, like those memories of Kailua were of this sleepy little town that was a small, like, nice place to live. And I remember my family, we moved back to Kaneohe uh, right after the flood. A lot of you folks have heard my flood story. Uh, and I remember thinking Kaneohe was a big town, you know? And the one thing that I, I just keep seeing all the time is this, or I, I keep feeling all the time is just how crowded it is. Just how crowded it is on the windward side in particular. It's crowded in town, but it kind of always has been. And, now it's worse, but that's town. <laughs> you have access, and you have mobility, and you have density yeah. in town. And over here, you had different access, and different mobility, and different density. You had community. And it does feel like uh, I can't get a hamburger at Teddy's on a Saturday with my kids, because I'll have to stand in line for an hour, and they'll go nuts. Yeah. And. Uh, and so that's frustrating because the Kailua that, that a lot of people remember seems like it's, it's just not there anymore. And when did that all happen? And how did it happen? And what are we supposed to do about it? The influence of social media. I get asked on occasion, um, do you feel like my Kailua has uh, made Kailua worse? Well, there's a beautiful thing called analytics and data. And it shows that 95% of my followers are from Kailua of Kailua have family members in Kailua. So I'm not a part of that social media engine that drives tourism to Kailua. Um, I, I will say that people do share the beautiful photos of that, and I'm sure that gets seen. But uh, I know that there's other entities uh, that are spending a lot of money. We don't spend any money to promote or market. The other thing is the way we used to manage tourism was to do tourism marketing. So a lot of the um, TAT dollars for uh, that, you know, everybody going to a hotel is charged, goes to the Hawaii Tourism Authority, which traditionally has been to go market Hawaii so that more and more people would come here. But they're beginning to shift that because they're beginning to see that though that tourism economy um, yeah, the, the, our beautiful environment is good for the tourism economy. The economy is hurting our environment right now. It's hurting our trails, it's hurting our beaches, our water system, our sewer system. Um, but the good news is one of Mapuana da Silva's haumana, Kalani Ka'ana'ana, who's in the back over there, is actually a key person in helping to change the way Hawaii Tourism Authority spends its dollars. So they're actually beginning to invest in our natural and cultural resources and we need to ideate and innovate some more the way Laura did when she was the land board chair. There are places that charge green fees um, that actually generate tons of income that we can plow back into paying for the damage that tourists do, improving our own civic life together. It's hard to do because we're not a standalone independent country, but it is still possible to uh, experiment and innovate.